I am Geoffrey Villardouin in the Sweden campaign from 1648, 30 years of war, a mod for medieval to Total War Kingdoms by Infracta. So this has been a long campaign. I've been making these videos for years now and uh, it's not the end quite yet. So here is the King of Sweden outside Mühlhausen and he's laying siege on Mühlhausen. It's the end of February 1632, moving towards March. So here's this uh, an Austrian army uh, in uh, Saxony. It's, they've passed by Dresden on the way to Greiz or Leipzig. Here's one of our diplomats near Machete in uh, North Germany. And uh, a Brunswick army has attacked uh, one of the Austrian armies outside Mühlhausen. There were two Austrian armies outside Mühlhausen, and um, there were two Brunswick armies. Brunswick is one of our allies. He was an important uh, combatant in the early days of the war. Uh, Christian, the Duke of uh, Brunswick, Wolfenbüttel, was a very important and powerful general in the early days of the war. And so here they are allied to us, naturally, and they have attacked that Austrian army. Here's the Austrian army. Uh, it's mainly musketeers. Uh, there's only a half-strength imperial tertiary for pikemen and a severely understrength unit of turncoats. There are four generals. And they are led by Philipp Friedrich von Kreuzenburg or something like that. And this is the uh, Brunswick Army. They have uh, some impressive OP artillery. They're led by Captain Harald. And here's our great leader, King Gustav Adolf, Lord of Terror. Here's a faction leader, King of Sweden, Protestant, of course. House of Vasa, supply abundance. He has some uh, supply wagons with him, perfect politician. Night fighter, active builder, excellent attacker. Uh, that will help in this battle. Colonel of cavalry, he's more than colonel of cavalry. He is the leader of his nation's cavalry. A merciless conqueror, giving alms. That's uh, somewhat counterintuitive. So here are the three armies. Friedrich, Philip Friedrich von Kreinberg is the enemy commander. Here's the uh, Brunswick army again. Here are the many, many traits of our great leader, faction leader, legendary commander, king of Sweden, house of Vasa, as was the Polish king, they were cousins. Perfect politician, master of espionage, blissfully ignorant. How can you be a master of espionage if you're blissfully ignorant? Okay, night fighter, active builder, but incompetent trader. You can't have it all. Excellent attacker. That's ideal for us. Good with infantry. Effective at night. Perfect for this battle because it's going to be a night battle. Flagship sinks. That must have been so embarrassing. Lux justice. Merciless conqueror. Brave and mostly rational. So a night battle. We have two armies who have clear superiority. And we've been drawn into this battle by the Brunswick attack on this particular Austrian army. So I will be using a graphics mod for this battle. I only use it sometimes for battles, uh, rarely, but I'm going to use it for this battle. That's why you saw there a slight change in the rendering of the colors and so on. The colors will be slightly deeper uh, and I think the views are deeper, you'll see. Not quite here, you can't see very much here. It's night, that's why. In the early days of the mode, <coughs> night battles were completely pitch black. Not even like this, only really pitch black. Pitch black, you couldn't see anything and anyone. You just see the guy next to you. Uh, at least here, uh, Gigantus did a trick, you'll see in a moment. Uh, and so here in the current version of the mode, the night clears up a little. So what we see here is the Brunswick army, because we are coming in as reinforcements. So 
the Swedish army comes in as reinforcements. King Gustav Adolf, Lord of Terror, is us. But this is not us, this is the Brunswick army. So you see the blue army on the minimap. And the red army is the Austrian army. It's the far corner or the opposite corner of the battlefield. And here's us. We still haven't come into the battlefield. We are in green. Coming in any minute now. But really, you can see very little at this point. But the situation will clear up. Don't worry. So, Dutch of Brunswick, so you see, uh, we switched to the Dutch of Brunswick. They're racing towards the enemy, they won't wait for us. We haven't even come into the battlefield and they're racing as far away from us as possible. So here's the Brunswick army. And in contrast to the, the uh, Austrians, they have many pikemen and also halberdiers, is garrison halberdiers. And some of their cavalry is just rushing headlong into the enemy lines. There you see them. The AI has no clear understanding of uh, strategy. And the rest of the army races pell-mell. We still haven't come into the battlefield. Here is us. And there are farms in front of us. So we have, it's not bad enough. We're in the furthest corner, uh, the, the opposite corner of the battlefield. We actually have to negotiate these farms as well. But Gigantus did a trick and uh, made the knight into this kind of twilight kind of view. It is easier for the viewer and uh, you uh, to see because otherwise you won't be able to see anything. I have some videos from the early days of the mod if you search in my channel where night battles were just pitch black. Anyway, so we're back to the Brunswick army. And uh, these are the harbors of the garrison, of some garrison. We've left the garrison to come and fight. Uh, most of the army uh, of Brunswick were militia. So that kind of makes sense. Now they wouldn't necessarily have halberds. They were just poorly paid, hastily recruited locals, hastily armed with very little training. What they were armed for, uh, what they were armed with, probably would have been armed with pikes, some of them maybe with halberds, anything else they could find. So here's uh, a, a Hakebuzi unit of the uh, Brunswickers, and here's their pikemen. You see, uh, with this graphic mod, I use it also in Broken Crescent. Uh, the images are the way of uh, sort of set it up. They, they have fuller color and greater depth, I think. And they feel like more human, something like that. I like it a lot better this way. They look less computer people, more like, like a little bit human. And very colorful. The colors are intense. The kind of shadows are intense and so on. And uh, there's fighting, they are holding torches, there's gunpowder, smoke. So these guys here are Austrians. The Austrians, as you remember, had many uh, musketeers. And so the musketeers now have drawn out the swords and they've been attacked by the Brunswick Harbardiers in red. The Imperials are in kind of yellowish colors. And at this period, the musketeers sometimes had swords. In England, rarely. Uh, it wasn't a very common thing. If they had swords, they weren't very good quality. Unlike in the novel of Alexander Dumas, the Three Musketeers were the great swordsmen. Maybe the French were different. Uh, most musketeers weren't really very handy with a sword. And they didn't have very good swords either. The quality was uh, not great. So as uh, the Brunswick pikemen are pushing onto the hill, uh, the Imperials 
being hard pressed. I had some cavalry, but Brunswick had pikemen, and so uh, the Imperial cavalry is not doing very well. Here's our army. Well, what can we do? No, I had to negotiate that farm. We have to negotiate these stupid buildings in the middle of the battlefield. And it was bad enough we set up at the very end. But it looks like uh, Brunswick will not wait for us. They, they were numerically superior, and so they probably think they can win on their own. Nonetheless, we are coming to their aid. So some of the Brunswickers here uh, seems to have been routed or were retreating, maybe got rallied again. There were some turncoats, no surprise. Here are their pikemen in this kind of reddish, bluish kind of colors. Some of the Brunswick cavalry charged in. They were hakibuzis as far as I can tell. So the Imperials have these yellowish palsiform musketeers, a lot of them, but they're at a disadvantage now that they're engaged in the melee. And I'm not sure who these pikemen are. Are they look like they are Brunswick pikemen because they have engaged these uh, Imperial musketeers here, the Austrian musketeers who are slowly retreating. And are they going to fight or are they going? What are they going to do? They've turned around, they're going to fight. It's very hard to tell who is who. If I didn't know, you wouldn't know. So these guys here are Brunswickers. Here are some Brunswick uh, halberdiers of the garrison of some garrison. Here is an Imperial Tertiary, but it was only half strength. So full strength would have been would have been 202 men. They only had 120 men. But this is probably the best pike unit in the game. So 120 of them are still a handful. And they are more than a handful for these halberdiers, although the Brunswick halberdiers, some of them are silver chevroned, nonetheless, the Imperial Tesha is such a good unit. Enemy force remains. Okay, well, we they seem to be doing okay. We're still on our way. So all you see here is Brunswick versus the Imperials. So here's uh, another Brunswick unit, it's tank coats. Very fitting for Brunswick to have these ragtag units. Some of the enemy generals, Theodor von Frimmel, has been slain. They had four generals. The Imperial Tesla is holding their ground, they're doing all the work. And they're charging. Charging through uh, the Brunswickers have these uh, fallen hopers, these swordsmen here. It's a decent unit, the guys in green, but they're dying. The Imperial Tertia is charging through. Oh, yeah, it's just massacring everyone. They're, they're just slaughtering. Everyone in the way. Oh, but they may have routed. They're overwhelmed by numbers. It looks like they may have routed. They are fighting, they're uh, surrounded, so they are fighting to death. And so it looks like uh, Brunswick has won this battle. Killed one of the enemy generals. It looks like most of the enemy units are now hard pressed or retreating. They're squeezed in that corner. Probably many units are retreating. We're still on our way. Here we are. What can we do? You could have waited for us. We have some artillery, but by the time we get there, they've been ordered to shoot at. Okay, so already the enemy army has left the field of battle. There are just a couple of units, probably generals, still skirmishing. Okay, I'm telling my cavalry to go and attack the enemy generals. Because otherwise we'll never get to see 
any uh, any fighting. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Are these Brunswickers? Are they Austrians? Imperialists? By St. George, we've captured the enemy general Fleas like the coward he is. Press onward and break the spirit of his army. I like these cutscenes. So the enemy commander, Philip Friedrich von Kreinberg, has been slain. And there's just one general's bodyguard, it seems, still hanging around. So the enemy commander is dead. Well, we've just arrived. We've set up our army here. Almost, not quite, in the process of setting up, and the battle is already over. So we're sending some cavalry to chase the last enemy general, still in the field of battle. So all these units you see here roaming around are Brunswick units. They've abandoned, no, they haven't abandoned their artillery. Artillery is still trying to get to the battlefield. This is the Brunswick artillery, I think. Here's our army with our king. We have deployed. Where is the battle? Okay, the battle is over. Must be a couple of men still in the battlefield, a couple of enemy soldiers somewhere that haven't left the field of battle. Where are they? Where are they? Will the battle end? So, there are going to be another two battles in this episode in March. The battle will end, I know. It ended eventually. So there'll be another two battles. Here's our king. But that's not all the battles of this month. I'll leave the last one for next episode. So, victory! All of Christendom will be awed by the victory we have won here today. We lost three men. Must have fallen off their horses. Because the battle was over by the time we got to see any enemy units. And so... Didn't kill anyone. Oh, we killed a couple of guys, somehow. Okay, this is a quote from a military manual called Military Discipline by William Barriff. An Englishman. Poised to ambush, sir. Ah, oh, we called the enemy commander prisoner. He didn't die. But the Kaiser rejected uh, ransom against the Imperial Archduchy of Austria is bankrupt. And so a sad fate befell his general. So there'll be another two battles, um, very reasonably big battles, but the biggest one will be in the next episode. I'm not going to say more. And so uh, the Polish, the, enemy lays siege, sire. the we Polish, must prevail. the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth has attacked Posen. and also this fort. They've attacked this fort before. The you remember? Has surrounded us. We are besieged. Close by, there were some Polish armies roaming this area, if you remember, from the previous episode. So they went into action. They laid siege on these two forts, a medieval fortified town and a star fort. The star fort of Poznan, or Poznan, as it's called in Polish. This is the area of Silesia, which at one point belonged to Saxony, but in the early days of the war it was by treaty passed to the Kaiser. 
Saxony very often tends to conquer this area or moves towards this area, let's say, during the campaign. And this is a Transylvanian army, the Siebenburgen army of Bethlehem Gab, uh, Gabo, which unfortunately has been molded in such a way that it's very passive. It wasn't always passive in the early days of the mode, but somehow uh, this uh, horde type armies have been molded to become very passive, so it doesn't do anything. I find this frustrating. So uh, here is that army outside, the Spanish army outside Baden, and they may be laying siege on Baden. Until now, there was no war between Spain and Baden. We'll see what what's going on. Hopefully, when uh, the notifications start. So it's March. The snow has cleared. The March of 1632. Head to head with the Imperial Archduchy of Austria in terms of strength, 69,000 florins income. That's uh, pretty good. Yes, so the Kingdom of Spain has gone to war with the Margraviate of Baden Dorlach uh, of Georg Friedrich. And Posen is besieged by the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. as well as the medieval fortified town. Here's the situation in Rostock. Uh, you see something very interesting here. You see the Austrian armies in this area. Here's one of the armies. There are more Austrian armies. Uh, historically, here it is. There was a war uh, between Denmark and uh, the Kaiser in 1625 to 26. And there is one also in this mode. It's kind of somewhat kind of historically molded in, somewhat. And the Austrians managed to conquer Lübeck, uh, not far from Rostock. In real history, they moved f towards Rostock and then uh, Stralsund. And so they are doing more or less the same thing. It's quite nice. So here's Posen. That's that army that was besieging Posen. Not surprising, they have a lot of cavalry, but I think we can manage them. Here's Mühlhausen. If you remember, our king is here laying siege on Mühlhausen. We also have a couple of other armies. We go back to Posen. You see, this is the garrison of Posen. Uh, we have some grenadiers as well. Four, four companies of musketeers. Uh, we have relative parity. Uh, we don't need reinforcements. We don't need a relief force. We can handle this. This is the enemy army, the Austrian army. A lot of cavalry, a lot of musketeers as usual. But we can definitely win this. Honor and glory await England men. Attack! Sweden even. Sweden has taken the slot of England. There's there's no Swedish faction in Vanilla, so they have England. Units, await my orders. England as a voice. But there were some Englishmen who were fighting for Sweden, mainly Scots, some Irish, a few Englishmen. Englishmen fought a lot for the Palatinate. And they had a lot of units in that area because Elizabeth, uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of princess of Palatine, was um, English. She was an English princess. And so a lot of Englishmen served for the Palatine. So here's our general, uh, he's kind of 
guy that was skirmishing outside is trying to draw the enemy army towards him, basically. You see we have some grenadiers up on those walls, we have musketeers lining up the walls. Uh, the end of so many musketeers tried to take a shot at our general, but he kind of galloped away, so they retreated as well. They're staying at a safe distance from the walls. At one point in our mod, um, because the artillery and the, uh, the muskets had different ranges originally, units would set up too close to the walls because they were using the musket range. It's part of how this game is set up, it's part of how the, ra the engine runs. And so by making artillery and muskets to have the same range, which was actually historically accurate, they had the same point blank range, more or less, uh, units now are setting up at some distance safely away from the walls and the cannons, unless they can be drawn into battle by forces sallying out. So here's our general, and you saw earlier uh, some halberdiers were coming out. And what we're trying to do is, by bringing these units out, we, in these battles we're trying to draw enemy units closer to the walls because our musketeers are on the walls and of course the cannons can shoot at, can't shoot at them. And that's, that's how these battles went. Um, you can read Monroe's memoirs he talks about how they approached and they were greeted with shots of musket and cannon from the walls of towns and so on. So that's what you see here. The Polish have a lot of unique musketeer units. They're unique in appearance, they're not all that different from other kinds of musketeers. And here are some uh, regular possible musketeers, these guys in red. The blue are special units, they're not free upkeep, the red are free upkeep units, uh, this, this particular unit. And here's, uh, here are all men on the wall, the garrison. Posing. All you see here is motor. The walls are motor, the units, the, the amount of work that went into this motor is just stupendous. And uh, without Monty and Gigantus and all the amazing people at Infracta, you know, my life would be less interesting. Or my free time would be much less interesting than it has been the last few years. So these units here, these musketeers, we're trying to take shots at our general have been decimated. Their captain was saying retreat but they won't retreat and he was shot it was very sad so here's that unit of halberdiers that had come earlier outside of um, of uh, the city of the star fort it's kind of you know this kind of thing robert monroe talks about this kind of thing that they sallied out they took some shots they went back in and the skirmish outside, and some people got shot, and the cannonballs. And, and it's, it's kind of realistic. Maybe not 100%, but something like this you can imagine. Maybe less murderous. So that unit of uh, Halberdiers is um, going back out again. 
what we're trying to do is by taking them in and out, we're trying to get responses from the Polish army. So they don't just retreat and stay back. We kind of tease them to do something. And the AI responds to our movements. So they see units coming out, so uh, the Polish trying to do something about it. And here, finally, they decided to attack with their cavalry, uh, a force that had sallied out on the side. So, let's say on the left side of this picture. Um, we have sallied out some units, and they are on a kind of, on the top of a hill. You see there's also a kind of, uh, a kind of a gully here, or a trench. Okay, now we've drawn the enemy into battle. These guys go back into the safety of the walls. It's a little bit cowardly, but uh, what can you do? And uh, the enemy cavalry now is approaching. Yeah, so they pass by this bastion. On top of the bastion, we have two units of. Grenadiers and they've started shooting the uh, uh, pelting them with grenades. And there you see on this side the enemy general lies dead. We've sent the base cur to hell. Okay, we killed the enemy commander. We have these units. We have some uh, musketeers on top, and then we have our general next to the musketeers, and all around we have pike. Yeah, the musketeers. There's only one unit of musketeers. The rest are inside. They're here more to draw the cavalry in their direction. We have a lot of pikemen. There are some pikemen down on the slope. So they're not in the way. And the musketeers from up here can shoot at the enemy cavalry. Captain Dargoat, the enemy commander, has been slain. So you see there are pikemen. And the enemy cavalry is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, the enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. They're not just bloody bloody, they're also badly bloody. They're also badly burned by the grenades. And so you see we have these pikemen right here in the middle. They also have pikemen on the top. Sometimes the cavalry tries to squeeze through the pikemen. But uh, they get then they get flanked by the pikemen. This is why you don't need a continuous line, and why in those days they didn't always have a continuous line, but they had these pikes and these blocks. Because if you try to go through, you get flanked by other tertials, by other pikemen, other musketeers. Okay, the wing castles decided to retreat. Here are our grenadiers. No, the castles, the wing castles are coming back. Yes. You see here they're trying to go through the pikemen. You see. But then they get pelted with grenades at their backs, there are pikemen on their sides and the rear, and they, you know, they feel insecure in their retreat. It's also uh, the fact that if you are among many enemy units and you are numerically inferior uh, in the mode, in terms of how the mechanics work, you tend to lose morale. And that's kind of, you know, it's kind of okay. How it should be. We're under attack. So the enemy horsemen went down into this trench. They now are being hit by artillery, so they change their mind. They go back down. In fact, coming back up on towards our general and the units that have sallied out. But it looks like they are getting severely depleted. Their numbers decreasing all the time and the grenadiers are doing some uh, fantastic work doing stellar work 
and they have excellent aim I have to say the grenades never miss their aim okay so it looks like uh, we've um, cleaned up the enemy army has been destroyed. The only cavalry you have is uh, the general's lifeguard. Yeah. So they have to do normal cavalry duty and uh, chase the enemy. I've often wondered, you know, if you're in a cavalry unit, it's a big one, and you charge, so you're you know, a few hundred horsemen. How do you stop? How do you turn? In such a big group. I mean, in small groups like that it might be possible. But in a battle, if you have like hundreds of horsemen charging, how do you stop? It'd be impossible. There'd be others behind you. You couldn't stop. How do you turn? You cannot turn. I, I don't know. They must have been able. They must have had some way to do that. I don't know. I mean, there are also battles that say that uh, the enemy cavalry wants to start chasing and defeated the other side. They just kept chasing them and chasing them and never came back. And I can see why, because to turn around you have like hundreds of horses. How do you do that? So here's a general. There must be some units somewhere still, because he's shooting at someone. His lifeguard is shooting at somebody. And the animations of the horsemen, when they shoot, they're very nice, I think. Okay, so here are a few, few enemy soldiers still left on the battlefield. There are a few, these double-handed swordsmen, it's my hander, and they don't seem to have seen who's shooting them. Who's shooting us? Oh. No one is shooting us. Is anyone shooting us? Oh. Those guys turn around. Hey, look at that. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. That's not looking good. I wouldn't. Behold, I wouldn't know what to do myself. <laughs> it's time to press the attack. I wouldn't have liked to be in this situation. <laughs> okay. All right. This is the end of the battle. The enemy are utterly vanquished. This is a great victory worthy of only the mightiest of generals. Of course, of course. We lost 26 men. It's not so bad. It went rather well. Okay, another nice view. This mod is great, if I may say so myself. This is a brilliant spot to spring a deadly trap, sire. Okay, we call those a few try hand at the Let end. Prisoner. Live, sire. Please, <laughs> glory, honor. I release them. Felt sorry for them. Well, the general is a uh, civilist general, so. You shouldn't lose chivalry for five men. There he is. Six marks of chivalry. So level six chivalry. Whatever they are. Pens or something. Helmets. Medieval helmets. Knight's helmets. And so here's the other battle, if you remember. The police were also besieging this fort. And we have another fort nearby. And so I took the guys of that other fort, put it in that ship that's yes. parked next to the fort that's under siege, and they're going to come in as a relief force. And you see, it's a sizable force. They also have artillery yes. under General Lindbergh, if I remember his name correctly. And this is the garrison. They also have some of this uh, lifeguard of Gustavus Adolphus unit, which is a kind of late post reform unit that you can actually hire in early game. So here's Georg Lindbergh, the uh, commander of the other fort. He's come to, re uh, to relieve this force, uh, this fort. Uh, the enemy has two units of 
uh, wing hussars, they have some uh, arquebusiers and musketeers. And we have some winged. No, I thought we had some winged hussars ourselves with the force that's coming to relieve yes, sire. the garrison. We bring the battle to the enemy. A quote from Martin Luther. Not a very scientific Units point. await my orders. So here's the garrison again. I've switched over, switched on the uh, graphic mode so for the battle, and we are sailing out. As always, Gail Limburg is coming with a relief force, and the garrison, mainly the pikemen, that are useless uh, inside. Uh, come out usually with uh, some short units, either harkibosias or musketeers, or bring musketeers with a relief force. But most of the musketeers stay inside to shoot from the walls, um, much safer. A very interesting landscape here, very barren looking, very kind of sandy looking. So here's the uh, Polish army. They are staying at a distance, at a distance of musket shot from the walls. They have some musketeers. It looks like we sallied out either in the early morning or in uh, the uh, sort of evening, kind of early evening. The sun is going down. This is the relief force. This is us. Have some uh, pre-reform musketeers. We have these engineers here. Here we have some dragoons on the walls. Another unit selling out. I think these are selling out from the front because the Polish units were not responding. So we're taking this unit out from the side that's facing the enemy, not from the side gate. In the hope that we may draw the enemy into battle. And indeed we've managed to draw the enemy into battle. So here are these Cossack musketeers, they're behaving like dragoons in game turns, they skirmish a lot. And they fight in a more loose formation, they are fast, they are Cossacks, so they would have had horses in reality, but we cannot dismount units in the mod. And we have a unit of Hakebusias that were in the garrison uh, here, and so they are going to do a little bit of skirmishing. You saw this in the previous battle, I think, or maybe not, it was maybe a different fort. But they'll skirmish in the same way, um, so they will annoy the enemy and, uh, and shoot their flanks as they're moving forward or retreating, not unreasonably. So some Polish musketeers have set up here to shoot at the Hakebusias and uh, they probably started shooting but the Hakebusias are kind of well, they're behind that ridge they're not visible and so the Polish musketeers don't really have a shot and in trying to get a shot they try to move towards them but then they get shot from the walls here's the um, lifeguard of the king, of the Swedish king. Because of the graphic mode they look a little bit greyish. Uh, usually they have a light blue color. Yeah, they look more greyish rather than light blue. The 
all his musketeers keep skirmishing forward because you can't get a clear shot of the uh, Archibasius. And they probably sense that we are now coming out with a, with a sally out, we're, we're kind of sallying out, there's a D force coming in. The AI responds uh, to various things. For example, if it gets shot, if it sees units, uh, you know, you know, human player units, but they have to be within range, otherwise it will not respond. And the range here is very long, so, I mean, you know, they have a 250 shooting range, firing range, the musketeers. And so they're way back, so they will not respond so easily, especially in situations such as these, where they're laying siege. They don't want to come close to the walls. So the AI is actually quite clever, but the human player can always outplay it. And uh, one trick is to shoot with a general who has a very long range from a great distance away and entice them, for example, to move forward or otherwise kind of sally out but stay behind a slight hill or so to force the enemy units to come closer to you. Uh, but you have to be dangerously close and then they will try to, to attack you. So it's not so straightforward always. It's a balance. And sometimes I fail to get the enemy to attack and I just just have to sit there and wait. And so the enemy cavalry now is approaching. Uh, the units have sallied out. They have been joined by the reinforcements. And we have some artillery, if you remember. We have two batteries. And they're loading some cannon shot here, some round shot, I expect. They have two batteries, four cannons. Okay, it looks like they changed their mind. I think I might have changed to canister or grip shot. Okay, and these uh, wing hussars have attacked the uh, mercenary pikemen there. These are our. Okay, the fired grip shot. Yes, the fired grip shot. And a Hakibuzius are shooting on the side. Also have some wing hussars, so the relief forces come in with wing hussars. It is possible that some of these wing hussars are our own. Here, here are Hakibuzius. And they are shooting at the sides of the enemy army. That was their job in real battles. Dragoons and Hakibuzias which stay on the sides and just take chance shots at enemy cavalry mainly. But of course they could be counter charged by Kyrsias. And in melee they have, would have the Kyrsias would have the advantage. They were heavily armored. Okay, we have some grenadiers on the walls, you saw them earlier. They are throwing grenades at these enemy Hakibuzias. And they got stuck against this building, and they kind of skirmish effectively. That's why it's nice to set up new buildings, because then the AI gets stuck around these buildings. But of course, so might your own army, so you have to be careful. So here are our Hakibuzias, and they are skirmishing at the flank of the enemy army, as the enemy army kind of marches forward and back. They are shooting now at the Polish army as it is slowly moving back because they were losing the fight. Oh! We're countercharged! That's rare. We're countercharged by the Wing Hussars. Oh, but our Hakibuzias are faster than the Wing Hussars, so they can run away. But that was an interesting move by the AI.
Hakebusius and uh, all uh, sort of dark part of cavalry uh, look so nice. I think the animations are great. Uh, pistol ears, Hakebusius. They look really nice in terms of their animations. But no one looks as impressive as the wing hussars with the great enormous wings. So we're skirmishing at the sides of the wing hussars. They're moving back and forth. They don't know whether to attack, they want to attack. And then, as soon as they get close to the walls, they get shot from the walls. Uh, the enemy, you know, the Cossacks should be shooting at our cavalry. Of course, the cavalry can kind of gallop away, but the Cossacks are not doing a great job, I must say. I mean, sometimes dragoons will stop and shoot at cavalry, or they will try to engage cavalry in melee. If you have Hakibusius and Kirsius that come too close to dragoons. But if you charge dragoons with Kirsius, usually the dragoons will lose if you charge them. But you suffer casualties where shooting at them. If you can skirmish effectively, you suffer fewer casualties. It's a kind of mind game. Uh, you know, you have to try things out. Okay, uh, the battle here continues. So another uh, Wing Hussars unit has attacked our pikemen. Here are our own Wing Hussars. I think what happened here, you see our general is over there. I think some enemy Wing Hussars, the Polish ones, try to outflank the relief force, you know, the units that had sallied out in the relief force. And so I had to send in our own wing houses uh, to oppose them and stop them. So now we have a fight between wing houses. There are some that I have, mercenaries, I don't remember how I got them, but I have them. It's just this one unit. And these are Polish ones. Here they're engaged with uh, this mercenary pikemen who are holding their ground steadfastly, if, my, if I, I may say so. Winghasas are uh, making another comeback. They're trying to go past these pikemen. But of course, I have other units on the side, and I also have the Winghasas of, uh, you know, our own wing houses over there. Oh, they're charging our own wing houses. I'm sending some pikemen, because I think I also have my general around here. And of course the Hakebusias. Now the Hakebusias are shooting at their sides, and all our pikemen are coming to help our own wing houses, which are on the foreground fighting the enemy wing houses which look identical sorry about that not much I can do about it maybe if I have flags you might be able to see who's who possibly maybe our Python have arrived if we continue like this we will smash the enemy and I also have brought out the grenadiers and the grenadiers have uh, routed the wing houses so the Grenadiers are a shock unit. Uh, they're also a unit with flamethrowers for mines and uh, Grenadiers. And what other shock units are there? I think these are the two main ones. And they have a big effect on morale if they, if they get involved. The enemy general flees so, like the coward he uh -huh. is. Press onward and break the spirit of his army. So the Cossack Musketeers, uh, the enemy sure. general was with We've the Cossacks. We've captured the enemy's general. That'll teach the cowardly dog to turn tail and run. Now he can rest at our leisure. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Okay. So our general has charged the uh, 
those Cossacks. There's another unit of Cossacks here. I mean, Cossacks and Dragoons, uh, early in the battle, can be resilient, depending on, depending on how much support they have from other units around them. But as the battle progresses and the units uh, get depleted and their numbers thin out, they tend to be more shaky. If you charge them, they may break. Army flees the field. Right. Pursue and run them down. Just as I expected, at this point this was the last unit still fighting in good order, and they were being charged by our cavalry. So these uh, wing houses are our own. And they figured it out. Yeah, you see the flag of Sweden here. The flags of the cavalry were smaller because you know, to reduce air resistance, and they were called cornets. Yeah. All of Christendom will be awed okay. by the victory we have won here today. And they were sometimes triangular, but here, they yeah, square. So we lost, six, uh, lost 68 men, and the enemy lost basically their entire army. If the enemy finds us here, it won't be to their liking. Yeah, we took a few prisoners. A wise choice. No, please, man. Sure. Ah! Oh, well. Victory in your name, my lord. The units were not ransomed. Uh, the yeah, the my prisoners friend. were not ransomed. Your will, sire. So, we can switch those units around, since they haven't expended any movement points, we can put them into the other fort. And we can leave Georg, Georg Lindbergh Orders. in uh, the fort that was previously yes. besieged. Command me, sire. The fort of Shrim. Okay, and that was Command me, sire. today's episode. We are back in Mühlhausen. Uh, here's our king. Your and so this will You're be in. the battle for the next episode. This is the last battle Order. this month. I won't say Your more. Will, and uh, what I have to do is basically, since I'll be attacking yes, this turn, I want a lot of pikemen. Yes, no, I don't have sir. many pikemen. Yes. I just have to get all the pikemen I can. Put them with the king. And honor, storm Mühlhausen. But that's for the next episode. Thank you for watching.